Hey everyone, it's Scory here. One of my subscribers recently asked me, what would you say to those who are trying to start up a gaming channel such as myself? Don't. The first thing I'd say to those aspiring YouTubers, gaming or otherwise, is that it's not too late. Whilst it would have been easier for you to gain subs a few years back when there was a lot less competition, it doesn't mean you still can't become the next big internet sensation. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to grow your channel, so you might as well start now. There's no point putting it off, as things will just be more difficult when you do finally start. And don't worry too much about your content being shite either. Your first few videos most likely will be. A lot of people put off doing YouTube for this very reason, saying they'll wait till they can afford that fancy microphone, capture card or editing software. Visual or audio quality doesn't make the content though, it's the content that makes the content. A funny moments or let's play video is only appealing if it's entertaining, regardless if it's in 1080p 60fps or not. Besides, no one's born an editing prodigy, and very few are naturally good at talking to themselves, also known as commentating. The only way you're going to truly improve is with practice. Don't be deterred by your equipment or your setup, use what's available to you, just get stuck in and have some fun. <laughs> You'll hear this response from creators a lot when they're asked for advice on starting a channel. You've got to be unique and stand out on the site. No longer is it viable to just make Minecraft Let's Plays, at least not if you want to grow. If you're making them purely to have fun, then more power to you. But if something's already been done a million times, what's the point of just adding to that number? Unless you can do it better than everyone else, find something more niche. An area of content that entire channels haven't already been built upon. Whilst at first it may seem like an impossible task to come up with a series that hasn't been done before, there are a few things I can suggest to help. Firstly, as soon as you get an idea for a video, a whole series, or even just a name for said video or series, despite not knowing what the content will be, just that it's a solid name, write it down. The last thing you want to do is come up with an original concept for a video, then forget it a few moments later. I tend to use a note-taking app on my phone since I've always got it on me. The next thing I'd recommend is try and draw influence from other creators. However, there's a big difference between being inspired by someone and blatantly copying their format. Take outside Xbox for example, the content they're most well known for are video game lists. X times something did something. They probably made their videos sound really boring. They're not, honestly, those guys make fantastic content. Now if I decide that I wanted to start making list videos in the style of outside Xboxes, that's fair enough, providing it's not an exact copy of the same topics. It's definitely not fair of me to recreate the same list with the same items on said list on the same game, plagiarizing Andy, Mike and Jane's hard work. But if I took that format and decided to apply it with my own ideas for video game lists, that's far more acceptable. The final thing I'd say if you're stuck for ideas is just play a game. The amount of times I've just been messing about and came up with a great concept for stuff to do in is uncountable. Hey, maybe even record that play session in case something particularly awesome happens. <laughs> Consistency is key when it comes to growing your YouTube channel. Ideally, you want to have a fresh piece of content out every day. Realistically, not everyone is able to do this with work, school and life getting in the way. It all depends on how long your videos take to make. If you're saving away for 50 hours of video, you'll be lucky to get one out weekly. Whereas if you could shit out a video in an hour, there's no reason not to upload every day. One way to keep a steady flow of content is to mix equal parts killer and filler. I'll have a video out going in detail on this logic in the near future. To give you a quick rundown though, if you have a series on your channel that's really good, but takes a lot of time to make, and a series on your channel that isn't quite as good, but you can create in half the time, then you can alternate between the two in order to upload more frequently. Take my channel for example, an episode of Stuff To Do In takes upwards of 10 hours to create. Kabagori, on the other hand, takes only a few. That probably explains why one of those comes out every week and the other once every four months. A good way to boost your view counts is for your content to be relevant. No, that doesn't mean you have to report on YouTube drama or create it. Don't go starting shit. What I'm referring to, if you're a gaming channel, is covering new games. I'm not saying that you won't be successful playing older titles, but you've got a much better shot at growing when you're creating videos on a game that everyone is searching for. There's two issues to this strategy, however. The first being, you've got to be quick. If you're not amongst the first to upload on that new game, you'll be buried under everyone else in the search results. And the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be for your video to get noticed. It doesn't help that larger channels get review copies of games, allowing them to prepare and even upload content early. 
The second issue with trying to be first is that it's bloody expensive to keep buying new games. Certainly if they're $60 AAA releases. Creators racking in higher view counts could get away with it due to the ad revenue generated on the videos, far exceeding the price tag of the game, or as mentioned earlier, they're being provided keys for free. Supposing you want to try this strategy of being first out the door, you're going to have far more luck with indie titles. With nowhere near as much marketing and hype as AAAs, you've got a far better chance of making the front page. Plus, the indie devs usually appreciate the free exposure. Now, I'm really not a fan of rushing out content. A way to get around this yet still compete is preparing beforehand. Who says you have to make a thumbnail or write the tags after you've made the video? On occasion, I've sorted all that out before the game's even released, allowing me more time to focus on the content itself. Anticipating not only the popularity of a game, but the more popular elements of said game should give you plenty of ideas for content that will do well. An obvious example would be Call of Duty. The vast majority play COD every year for its multiplayer, not its campaign. Hence why there'll be more searches for multiplayer gameplay opposed to single player. On the other hand, since you're a small channel and know that everyone's going to be making multiplayer videos, it might be better for you to focus on another part of the game. Hopefully that illustrates how a little preparation can go a long way. You somehow battled your way to the top of the search rankings, only to be let down by a shit thumbnail. To put it into perspective, imagine there are two identical Let's Plays next to each other. Same game, similar title, similar length. You've never heard of either YouTuber before. You're going to click the one with the more appealing thumbnail, right? Wait, what do you mean you don't watch Minecraft Let's Plays? <laughs> Alright, alright, what about these? Jokes aside, I'd say a video thumbnail is definitely the most crucial piece of metadata. Now I understand not everyone can afford Adobe Photoshop, but there are loads of free alternatives out there for those strapped for cash. I personally used to use a program called Paint.net, which is completely free and suited by needs perfectly. Thumbnails aren't the only bit of graphics I'd focus on. Having a stellar logo and banner could be the difference between someone subscribing or not. If you've got the content, but not the branding, how are people meant to remember you from the thousands of other channels out there? And trust me, you don't have to be a professional in graphics design to make a half-decent YouTube banner. Just look up some tutorials to learn the basics of your chosen piece of software. The main tip is be original, not only with your content, as mentioned earlier, but with your branding. You want to stand out, be memorable, so don't just copy your favourite YouTuber's banner design. Your channel's name plays a part too. If you're struggling for that one, lucky for you, I've already made a video on that topic over a year ago. I apologise in advance for having to listen to prepubescent me. Everyone's going to have a different reason for starting a YouTube channel, a different idea in their head of what it's going to be like, and a different goal they'd be contempt with reaching, that's if they even have goals in the first place. Most, particularly those that solely watch, just see the content, not the hours upon hours of editing, recording, and preparation put into each and every video. They don't see the hate messages or the spam comments, they don't see the dips in the bar charts and line graphs. YouTube is not as easy as it initially appears. It's not for everyone. I'd say give it a go and make videos for as long as you have fun doing so. Try not to expect too much in return. It's a nice idea that one day we'll all be able to do this as a job. However, that's a very difficult and fortunate place to reach. Don't let me deter you of your aspirations. I just want to make it clear that it'll probably take a lot longer and a lot more work than you realize. Unless, of course, you make experiment glowing 1000 degree knife videos. Yeah.